Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We are going to be talking about the second grade project. And our second grade project has to do with mystical creatures. And what are mystical or mythical creatures? Um, well, here we have the example of a dragon, we have a kraken, and then we have a mermaid. A kraken is basically a really large octopus, and mythical creatures um, have been around for a really, really long time. And they're in a lot of different cultures, and they have a lot of different names. And as a general category, they're also called supernatural beings, legendary creatures, or even monsters. Uh, we also had examples of the fairies, okay? Um, now, a lot of different um, companies throughout the decades have taken these ideas and made them into movies, made them into books. So we do have a lot of different animated characters based on mythical creatures. All right, here we have a few others. Uh, but before we start our second grade project, we need to remind ourselves of what the value scales are. In class, we did talk about how every medium um, has a value scale, right? Whether it be marker or crayon or watercolor, oil pastel, whatever. Um, the only difference is how you create those value scales within the mediums. So here, we are going to be using watercolor. Now remember, in order to get a darker tone, your paper has to be dry and your brush has to be almost dry. Very, very little bit of water goes into the pigment to activate the pigment. Um, and so this would be like the dry on, dry on dry technique to get as much pigment as possible for the darker tone. And then as you go uh, to the lighter hues, you start to add more water, add more water until you get to the very, very last one over here. Okay. Continue. All right. So for day one, I am going to play the video. You are going to see um, some fast uh, time lapse, but I'll try to guide you through it. The very first thing we're going to do right now is pass materials before we do this. Okay. Now, um, some of us might need to share. Okay. Um, the carbon paper. Now there's two sides to the carbon paper. Watercolor paper goes first. You're going to look for the shiny part. The shiny part goes down. So right now, if you look, I am pressing on the matte side. So the shiny part goes down on the watercolor paper. And that is going to transfer um, the carbon. Okay. I'm trying to extend it. Then I'm going to put my drawing on top and you guys can use a pencil for this i'm using a different tool but you guys can use a pencil for this to trace over the drawing and now here we have the mermaid but if you chose the kraken then you can use the kraken Okay, so here I'm going to start wet on wet. 
you're going to wet your paper so that the pigment that you add is not as concentrated. And you're gonna continue adding some more water and some more paint. Now this effect kind of reminds me of fireworks or tie-dye. You can leave it, but if you don't like it, you can go on ahead and blend it using your brush, okay? I am going to do the same thing for the tail. Now, everybody asks me, how do I make peach color or skin color? Well, it's gonna be the lighter peach tone is going to be a mixture of uh, orange and yellow and water because you're gonna try to dilute that. If you feel like you have too much paint on something, then you can dab it and take away some of that color with a paper towel. All right, now the hair of your mermaid can be whatever color you want. I'm gonna choose pink just because it's a color that I haven't used yet. Now, before you start doing step three, you need to make sure that your paper is dry. Okay, so for step three, you're going to add details using wet on dry or dry on dry, which means that your brush is going to be very as dry as possible so that you can add still a little bit of pigment and it's going to show up at a very, very dark value. Okay, so what you need to do is just wait a little bit, maybe blow on it or something to make it dry. If not, you're gonna have to wait until next time. But if yours is dry, you're just gonna add the darker details the way I am here. All right, so here's a time-lapse of me adding details to this mermaid. and I am adding some more details. This will be the last day of, um, of the watercolor, okay? Next time you come in, we are going to finish this by making it glow in the dark, okay? So once you're done, today is, is the last day, okay? And then the next time you come in, we're gonna be talking about glow in the dark. So go on ahead and pause it here or stop the video here and make sure you clean up all of your materials. And we'll see you next Art Club Day. All right, boys and girls, this is the second Art Club Day. And I am hoping that everyone's project is very dry um, before we start on making it glow in the dark. But before we do that, let's talk about uh, the fact that there are some animals out there that are already glow in the dark um, or fluorescent, okay? Let's talk about the firefly squid. It produces a blue light that scientists believe may be used for communication, camouflage, or attracting food. And the anglerfish, if you've ever seen Finding Nemo, this anglerfish on the first movie comes out and they're in very deep, dark water. And Dory gets lost down there and Marlin gets, they get lost. And this fish has this little light that appears out of nowhere. And that's how it attracts Dory. So they're bony fish named for their characteristic mode of creation in which a modified luminescent fin ray reacts as a lure for other fish. Basically, it lures them into their mouth, pretty much. 
The humble jellyfish is perhaps the most bioluminescent animal on the planet. It's estimated that about half of the 2,000 or so known species, they exhibit some kind of glowing ability. The most common use of light in jellyfish is to escape from predators. All right, so now the glow in the dark uh, paint that you guys have, or even highlighters, okay, um, they contain phosphor or a substance that emits light from a certain length of time after exposure to energy source. Basically, you have to charge it, okay? Um, you can charge it via sunlight, so like solar energy, or you can charge it with another type of artificial light. Okay, um, and also contain contains zinc sulfide and calcium sulfide, um, which are phosphorus.
All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this awesome video for second grade. I really, really hope that you come to the exhibition. It's going to be after spring break. We're going to have so much fun.